Hi tribe, welcome back to my channel. Kinnam Mapalomaku, a personal finance columnist and published author of the best-selling book. If you have not grabbed yourself a copy, why not? It's available at exclusive books, bargain books, and on take a lot. All right, so the conversation I want to have today, I want to talk about how to find the right financial advisor. So this week I worked with um, NetBank. This is not a sponsored post for sure. But, you know, they were asking the question, how do you find if the right financial advisor? And it was a slightly different conversation. But I thought, let me come on here and give you some tips on how to find the right financial advisor. Guys, it's not easy. Let me tell you from the get-go. It is not easy finding the right financial advisor. Why? Because historically in South Africa, financial advisors have just been salespeople pushing product and not really listening to you what your goals are and that sort of thing. So it's still relatively like that, but it's starting to change. And there have been a lot of improvements as more and more people start educating themselves about personal finance. So I'm just going to go through some tips that you can look out for, some of the things that you can apply in finding the right financial advisor. So first things first, of course, it has to be someone from a reputable company. It has to be registered. Uh, it has to be registered with the Financial Services Board. Well, it's not local Financial Services Board now, but it has to be registered. Okay, so that's number one. Reputable and it has to be registered. Number two, the person themselves, right, they have to have qualifications, right? So the most prominent one is a CFP designation. So it means a certified financial planner. So this person has studied a postgrad in financial planning. Um, maybe they have a big home. Um, but that CFP designation is very important because you know that person has had the right type of training. They have the right type of knowledge um, to solve your problems. Okay. Then, of course, experience. If it's someone who's been in the industry for a year, I mean, <laughs> they obviously they have to learn from somewhere, but you want someone who has skill, who has spent time in the industry and they know what they're talking about. Then I think another thing that we take for granted, and for me, this is one of the biggest, biggest ways in which you can find the right financial advisor is through recommendation. Okay. If I'm going to recommend someone to my sister, I know and I trust that person, right? And the likelihood that you will get similar service is very high. Unlike just picking up someone off of the streets, you know, how do you know, right? So I think if you can start asking your friends and family, do you have a financial advisor? Are they good to you? Do you really um, think they give value? I think that's one of the, the best ways to find um, a financial advisor. Actually, something I don't even have on my notes here. Let me be a bit controversial. And I'm just thinking out loud as I go. One thing I think can be a mistake, it's not always, but it can be a mistake. When people get married, especially women, what they do, they, let's say, probably never had a financial advisor. Now you get married, maybe your husband has a financial advisor. Now you make that person your financial advisor. And without going through the process of saying, do I like this person? Because another thing when it comes to a financial advisor, you generally have to like them because you cannot be working with someone you don't like. It doesn't make sense, right? So I find that a lot of the times women will just be like, oh, no, we have a financial advisor. Ma'am, you don't have a financial advisor. Your husband has a financial advisor. You need to go through that process. And if he checks all those things that we've spoken about for you, then you can say, oh, he's also my financial advisor. So just because you're married doesn't mean that that person has to be your, your financial advisor. Okay. And then... Okay, so now let's say, okay, they, they come from a reputable company, they have qualifications, they have the experience, they have the CFP, they come highly recommended, um, and it's someone you can feel like, oh, you know what, I kind of like this person, this is someone I can kind of work with. Then you have to ask them questions. What I see all the time, especially as women, you don't want to ask hard questions, guys. In life, you must ask hard questions. I tell Pam this all the time. Even men, when you're dating, you must ask people hard questions. Don't just think, oh, no, you know, I'll see. Ah, 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 ah. There's no I'll see. With me, I have to ask you questions right now so I know what's happening. <laughs> so 
equally with a financial advisor a potential or a potential financial advisor you have to ask them hard questions if they cannot answer those questions red flag red flag if they're uncomfortable answering those questions why um, i mean this this is work at the end of the day so i need there are some things that i need to know the first thing you need to ask your financial advisor or potential financial advisor is how are you compensated how are you paid okay and i know people are like oh, how do you ask someone that uh it's your money you have all the right to ask how how are you going to get paid here so there are a couple of ways in which financial advisors get paid number one is commission number two is fee based then obviously there are other ongoing fees and there are what you call assets under management so let me explain each right commission is simple they recommend a product they get um a commission from selling that product basically right and this is the most popular one in SA, massively popular um and i've seen some shady stuff because you know people just being sold even the wrong type of product but that's why that is why you must take responsibility as well as an individual don't just say oh i didn't know i you have to do a bit of research really guys we have to do a bit of research here you cannot always blame someone else you cannot always say you know yes most of the time we don't know but there is so much information out there there's youtube there's books there's the internet there is so much you can literally call me send me an email you know if you want to find out something there is so much information and yet we get paralyzed analysis paralysis and if someone says oh this is the right thing you go with that so i am um, commission based then there's fee based this one is not very popular in SA, but it's some companies are starting to do it but the problem with a lot of the people a lot of people they don't understand why should i pay you a fee for you to recommend something or for you to um look at my situation and for me i would rather prefer this one right and let me go back to the commission one the misconception is you're not paying for that advice so even if you are not paying them directly right now, you're not paying them money uh, up front because they are going to get commission from the products that you that you that they recommended to you. They are going to get paid. You are going to pay something, right? So there's nothing for free. It's not free. And oftentimes um with fee based, that's what people think like, "Oh, why must I pay 20,000 for a financial plan?" I would rather do that and of course if you do have it and it's not always 20,000 it depends on how complex your situation is so if it's an easy plan that they can do probably they can charge you a thousand two thousand five thousand depending right but open yourself up and this is what I say what I tell Pam all the time do I not you do. yeah like people love saying oh things are so expensive I'm like did you actually check how much it is did you actually inquire how much it is right i do ridiculous stuff okay i have gone to a bentley dealership and asked okay how much is this car that i want i didn't just block myself and say oh yo 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 that car must be so expensive no i went and checked so when i say i want a bentley i know what i'm talking about i've checked for a private jet for to, to take us from here and um, to a holiday destination for my family i didn't say yo yo that is beyond me i can never do that i went and i literally inquired and i have a code i put it up on my vision board because i know it's something that i'll be able to do so don't close yourself up and say oh things are so expensive i'm sure they're expensive inquire you might just find that actually i can afford that all right so fee based they're saying okay i'll come up with a financial plan for you depending on the many hours i spent on come on formulating this thing i will charge you x amount per hour but you know that they they are not going to recommend to you things that are going to give them more commission if if you get what i'm saying right then there's what you call ongoing fee so maybe that person doesn't charge a fee but they say okay we have recommended this product to you uh, because you know you need x and y and they will be getting some fee ongoing fees from from that product so for example i know um let's say with a retirement annuity of course you have um the company that is like the, the the asset manager who charges their fees and also a financial advisor can get ongoing fees on there and also you must negotiate actually that's one thing i forgot to write <laughs> you must negotiate these fees it's not set in stone um and obviously you have to be it has to be within reason people have to eat 
it, this is their job they are qualified to do it and if they're doing the right job they deserve to eat so don't be like no no it must be zero fees it doesn't work like that also it, there has to be some sensibility okay then another question you should be asking them is are you an independent financial advisor or are you a tight financial advisor the difference between the two an independent financial advisor has a, a couple of companies that they can work with so meaning that they can recommend to you an array of products um so there isn't that much of conflict of interest um yeah there isn't that much conflict of interest so they can recommend a couple of products and a couple of asset management houses and insurance companies <coughs> excuse me <coughs> then if you're a tight financial advisor it means you work for that company you can only sell the products of that company right like you can't sell anything else so for me i i think it's more advantage it's it's more of an advantage to go with an independent one where there's different or multiple products that you can choose from okay then i think this is very important if you're sitting down with someone maybe you've just met right remember a financial advisor is a relationship it's not just hit and go you know you don't meet this person today they give you a product no and this is one of the red flags that you should look out for if you're sitting down with someone and they already tell you oh pam you look like you need a million rent life cover oh and then we can give you and you're like whoa whoa, whoa 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 you are moving too quickly get to know me sir wine and dine me first you know ask me about my life ask me about my goals ask me about my current situation what's going on where are you currently you know what are your thoughts you know just having that relationship that's how a good relationship with a financial advisor starts by them getting to know you if someone is sitting down in front of you for the first time and they're already talking about product ma'am run a opposite direction that person is not a financial advisor that person is a salesperson okay so that person has to get to know you has to find out your story has to find out um what your goals are and what is it um that you want to do with your life who do you have kids you know just gather as much information as possible actually it's one of the steps all of 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 the financial planning process and i wish i actually had printed it out but <laughs> it's okay <laughs> i think this covers it all right so part of the financial planning process that proper financial advisors are taught is that you get the information in the first meeting you don't just go there already saying yeah yeah okay where well, now you need life cover you don't even know me and i might have the same thing with my work so um that you have to definitely look out for then another very important thing is you need to ask your financial advisor how many times are we going to meet in a year or actually how many times are we going to meet am i going to meet you today and never hear from you uh, maybe five years later when uh, something happens in my life i'm like hey man you know i once took out that product so um it's part of treating customers fairly right treating customers fairly says at least once a year you should see your financial advisor or your financial advisor should see you or send you your portfolio so at least once a year but adding to that i think we must also take responsibility as clients as individuals on this financial journey don't just wait for the financial advisor to come and contact you this is your life too this is your plan too if you have any questions this person is there for that reason that you can call them up and say hey pam you know i was thinking about this and this or i'm i'm having a baby or i'm about to get married i'm about to get divorced whatever situation whenever there's a life-changing event you need to have your financial advisor's numbers quickly available so that you can tell them what's going on because sometimes these things change our plans or um, we have to uh, improvise or add to the plan or take away from the plan even when you're going through financial difficulties what people will do they will be too embarrassed to call the financial advisor and just go to the insurance company or the asset manager and cancel something right whereas they can perhaps you know take a look at your finances and say okay this is what's happening but I am looking at it this way and I'm thinking you know what here we can still cut or here actually you didn't realize that but I think it's just also having that relationship where someone can um someone from the outside of your situation can have a better view because you are deep in it you know where you know how it is when you're deep in the situation sometimes you don't really see thoroughly so it's very important to also communicate with your financial advisor 
then the last one <laughs> you've had this good financial advisor you found one or you might just find out that you know what this financial advisor doesn't meet my needs anymore or they cannot support what i'm trying to do or they do not they are not a good fit anymore for me um two years later three years later you can divorce your financial advisor and i think people are so scared i mean if marriages end in divorce come on you can definitely get rid of your financial advisor if they no longer um are suitable to what you're trying to achieve right and it's okay to find another one so I actually why i'm saying this i remember someone sent me a message on i think it was on twitter one of the social media platforms and they're like i like my financial advisor they've been good to me you know they are friendly they are wonderful but my portfolio has been stagnant i've actually lost money all of, of over all these years and when i looked at some of the products that were recommended they were not great the person was a nice person but they were not a great financial advisor so if you come to that awareness also you need to divorce them and i think this is where you know i think as an individual you cannot leave things to just be like oh okay no i trust this person fully it's good to have trust and you want to be in a relationship like that with your financial advisor but always keep up to date always educate yourself so that you can ask hard questions and so that you can ask the right questions because once you start asking the right questions you get the right answers so i hope i've shed some light into how to find a financial advisor like i said it's not an easy task but i definitely see value in having a financial advisor um a good financial advisor they really can take you from point a to b because like i said if you're in the thick of things it's harder to see but if you have someone else who who can be objective about your situation definitely they can take you from and let me actually tell you a story i remember when i used to be a financial advisor there was this guy uh, who was a client he would like put away money into an investment come december oh no mapala i need i need i need and i think we did that for like two years then on the third time he said oh i was like sir hold on why did you say this investment is for was it that you're gonna take it and you know do this thing i'm like you know what i cannot be part of this situation anymore you know i will not be part of this situation if I, I i don't want to be involved you said to me you want to invest for the next five years because you're probably going to move to another country or whatever now every time you go on holiday you come i said leave me i don't want to be a financial advisor anymore and that guy stop so also you need a financial advisor who can tell you like you know what you're being unreasonable right now you know sort of an accountability partner and like i said i know it's not an easy thing to find the right one but there are good financial advisors out there for sure okay and i know people ask me can you recommend i'm always like hey yeah yeah it's, uh, mm, you need to do your research first you need to do your research first all right tribe thank you so much for watching please remember to like the video subscribe to the channel and i will see you soon